Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is coming under increased pressure after Man United's worst start to the season since 1989. With Liverpool coming to Old Trafford this weekend, it's not about to get any easier. Lots are calling for patience with Solskjaer, but some are calling for his sacking. But what is the right thing to do? To discuss Solskjaer's future at Man United in some detail, I'm joined by The Athletic's Andy Mitten, long-serving editor of United We Stand. Thank you very much for joining me today, Andy. Cheers for having me. Um, now, as you may know by now, we've partnered with The Athletic and Andy is part of what is a world-class writing team that includes Oliver Kay, David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor. And Oliver Kay has just published an exclusive interview with Juan Mata, so make sure you go over to The Athletic to read that. You follow the link in the description, you can get a 30-day free trial with United People's TV and 50% off an annual description. All you've got to do is follow that link in the description. Now, Andy, as I said, Solskjaer is coming under increased pressure at the moment. But as far as you understand, how, how safe is Solskjaer's job at the moment? And, and could that change with the wrong sort of result and performance against Liverpool this weekend? I don't think there'll be any change as immediate as Liverpool if United uh, were to lose. I think that the club acknowledged that there are a lot of injuries. Uh, clearly, it's been a terrible start to the season. The worst for 30 years, as you said. Ironically, 30 years ago, that was when we started United We Stand. And it's almost in the same position that we're in now as we were in then. Hasn't been a bad 30 years in between, mine. But Ollie's he's, he's struggling. Uh, the team is struggling. Nine points from eight games. Nowhere near good enough for Manchester United. And you can add to that the terrible finish to, to last season as well. Um, as I understand, his position is not under threat. Clearly, the team shouldn't be 12th in the league. I don't think anyone expected a title challenge this year. But to be so far from the top, to be closer to the bottom so soon into the season uh, is a worry. I think there's just a patience that it's going to take time. It's going to be difficult. There's been a, a, a reboot at the club. They're doing things slightly differently now. They feel they've got the recruitment sorted because it's been pretty abysmal. And they feel that Ole Gunnar gets United. He's, he's got a lot of experience as a coach at United. He was obviously an half-decent player at United. And they feel that he's the right man to take the club forward. Action will clearly speak louder than what anybody feels. Uh, you can be the nicest man in the world, but you've got to be getting results if you're manager of Manchester United. I've written quite a lot this year. He's building for the long term, but he still needs results in the short term. And I stand by that. But when you're not getting results in the short term, that, that is also uh, a problem. But I don't think any, any sacking and another managerial change, A, is imminent, and B, will do much good right now. Personally, I agree. Because I feel that this, this sort of chopping and changing that we've had has led us to the position we're in. So to repeat the same mistakes with Solskjaer is not going to help anything. But it, it's sort of an, an understatement to say that momentum has to change. How, how do you think Solskjaer will go about doing that? Because is it just injuries? It, what, what do you feel is the momentum shift that has to happen at the United that, that could sort of change the swing of our season? He's got to start winning games and... it. it, it... Injuries is definitely a factor. You can't say it's 100% injuries because they went into this season with a squad which was too light. His view is he wanted to give chance to younger players. And while that's admirable, you've got to be bringing younger players into a decent side. So when people talked about the class of 92, they were going into a side of world-class players. It's not really fair to expect young players to carry a faltering Manchester United team. Young players invariably are inconsistent. And we don't know uh, whether they're going to be good enough. I do think that Scott McTominay is a, is a decent player. Um, Andres Pereira, I think he needs to do more. I've, I've written about him. I've spoke to him many times. He needs to raise his game if he's going to have a future at Manchester United. Uh, Mason Greenwood looks a great prospect, but he's 17 years old. Marcus Rashford's still young. Stop scoring, not good enough. Jesse Lingard's not younger anymore. His performances are nowhere near good enough either. So you can look at the younger players that have also been brought in. Aaron Wambasaka, he's done well. He, he, he's still young. Uh, but the, the team has got to be winning matches. And, and Oli Gunnar uh, is the manager and he's got to change uh, the current situation, like you say. It does look pretty bleak. Liverpool at the weekend, best Liverpool team I've seen probably since they won 
uh, won the league, which was a, a, just after the Middle Ages. And the European champions, which obviously delights me to say that. You didn't have to go to Madrid to write about them winning the European Cup like I did. It was absolutely horrendous being surrounded by a few thousand yep. scousers. And then you've got a run of away games. So after Liverpool, Belgrade, um, Norwich, Bournemouth, Chelsea, I don't think we're just going to see an immediate turnaround. I think it could get worse than, than what it's like at the moment. So I speak to a lot of people at the club. I know what's going on there. Uh, I think that from on the coaching side, maybe an extra pair of hands might be good for Oli Gunnar. Carlos Quiroz was a very good coach. He wasn't popular with a lot of the players because he'd call them by the second names. But they respected him because he was a winner. And Michael Carrick and, and Kieran McKenna, they're very good. They're, they're very nice. They're very pleasant people. And maybe you need a bit more muscle, a bit more of an iron fist in there to get the best out of some of those players. But clearly the squad is light. And they've gone into the season with a light squad. They've taken a gamble and it, and it hasn't paid off. Because when you've got five or six injuries um, to key players, the type of players you want playing against Liverpool, like Pogba, like Martial, it leaves them well short. And I'm pretty worried about the game on Sunday. Yeah, I think pretty much every United fan is. For me, I don't want to draw parallels to it, but I remember when we had Moyes, and I remember when we had Liverpool and City in the space of a week at Old Trafford, and we got absolutely pumped by both of them. And it was at that point where I realised that it was past the point of no return with Moyes. I don't think it's going to be the case with Solskjaer, but just a good performance against Liverpool, maybe ending that winning run that they've got could help that momentum shift. But the thing is, is that we've been at this point in the past, the recent past, with other managers and we pulled the trigger. What's going to stop United doing the exact same thing with Solskjaer? Because we may be hearing one thing from the club and they may, may, may end up sorry, doing something completely different. You know, what has changed? Has the strategy changed? enough that Solskjaer will be backed with patience and time. Yeah, that's what the club are, are saying. I mean, let's not forget he's only been in the job since December. This isn't his team. Uh, the three players that he's brought in look to be promising signings. Uh, the fitness levels, I'm told, are higher. Uh, so th there are some positives, but as you say, you, 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 you're basically saying a draw would be a decent result, and I get that. If United are not to be winning matches, we still need to see positives. Attacking football, evidence of a brighter future. And we're not even really seeing that at the moment. The team are not scoring goals. It's pretty terrible at the moment. And we're looking forward to this game against Liverpool, or rather not looking forward to it. United struggled against Rochdale, who are in the third division. They struggled against Astana from Kazakhstan. This is nowhere near good enough for Manchester United. They're falling so far short of the standards expected that pressure's going to build on everyone. The Glazers are getting it, quite rightly. Ed Woodward's getting it. He's made mistakes. He's quite rightly being criticised. Uh, and Ole Gunnar can't escape that either. He's the manager of the team. He has to take some responsibility. But it isn't his team. I believe that managers should get two years. Uh, whether it was um, uh, David Moyes, Van Gaal, who had a couple of years, Jose Mourinho had two and a half years. I think there's got to be more patience than there is. And I don't know whether Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to be a great Manchester United manager. But as a journalist, I speak to lots of people. I've just been in his hometown. And it's my job to do due diligence, if you like, and find out if someone's an idiot or not. And what I get back on Ole Gunnar is, is positive. He's not a soft lad. He's a hard bastard when he wants to be. He's not, uh, he's not got the body of work as a manager at some of the people um, at, the, at, at the biggest clubs. But neither did Pep Guardiola when he took over at Barcelona and they took a huge chance on him. Clearly, we need to see evidence of a great manager because Manchester United is one of the three biggest football clubs in the world. And right now, it's as bad as it's been for 30 years. The mood is absolute poison. And I understand that. But I did a survey this week and I, I didn't know what the outcome would be. And it was done on United We Stand, um, sack the manager or give him more time because of the problems are not his own and 83% said said backing I was surprised how high it was I am one who believes that he should be given more time I don't like 
the continual chop and changing of of managers. Um, I don't like the, the knee-jerk reaction, which you especially get on social media after anything goes wrong. I don't think that is a healthy environment. And I think United have been too hasty in the past in letting decent players go. Just because they've had a, a, a bad few months or even a bad season, Johnny Evans was a decent defender. He didn't cost any money. He had a bad season. Of course he did the season before he went. But this idea of get rid of the deadwood all the time just because somebody's not playing. United lost some good players. Raphael, it was a, it was a decent um, right back. Um, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have sold Alexis Sanchez because he did get a huge amount of chances. And I don't recall any protests when Romulo Lukaku was, was sold either. But there needs to be a balance between emotion and, and intelligence. And United are the people making those decisions. And they've not been doing it well. The recruitment has been poor. I, the recruitment largely has been woeful since Fergie left. I think that's fair to say. But in the summer, it looks like we got it right. You know, wan Maguire and James, all for different reasons, look very good signings and they were three key signings that we needed to make but every United fan would have went into the summer and said we need at least one central midfielder and after letting Lukaku and Sanchez go the logic would have been that we needed a replacement. Now did Solskjaer want a central midfielder this summer and a striker or did the club just not get them for him or was it Solskjaer's decision to say look I'm happy with the midfielders I've got I'm happy to let these strikers go and not replace them where does it, if there's blame, if, if that's the right word, but who chose to only make three signings this summer? Was it Solskjaer or the club? All I know for a fact is that the club find it difficult to get more than three signings done in any one transfer window. You're quite right in saying the free transfers came in are good. We're going to get three good signings every transfer window. Then that's fantastic because very soon Manchester United will have uh, a decent side. All I know for a fact is that he wanted to give McTominay more games. He wanted to give Andreas Pereira more games. And he felt that Fred, who trains well, should step up. Clearly, that's not happening. Uh, Nemanja Matic finished last season pretty poorly. They don't feel that he's finished as a player. Uh, saying now with the benefit of hindsight, that doesn't look like a, a wise move. But uh, made it the time that he made it, that was his choice. Could he have got another world-class player in? Um, I don't know. I don't know the answer. I, I know that they, uh, the three players that they, they identified and wanted, that they got. And they certainly look a lot better than the three players who, who came in last year. Fred's a 52 million quid midfielder. I agree. Fred, Fred is probably the strangest midfielder of the lot, really. I mean, Nemanja Matic, I've got my own opinion on him. I think... He's too slow for this faster style of football that Solskjaer is building. But you're talking previously about the Deadwood, the players that, are, that have left, and plenty did leave this summer. Sanchez, Lukaku, Herrera was let go, Fellaini went, Darmian went. And the culture has always been a big problem at United ever since Fergie left because the culture effectively left with Fergie. And Solskjaer has been trying to bring that in. The, the word that's coming out is that he wants players to be humble off the pitch, but arrogant on the pitch with their own self-belief in tight situations. Has Solskjaer been successful in starting to sort of reinstall a, a new, more united culture at the club and have the players sort of responded to it? If you asked me this at the start of March, I'd say absolutely. Isn't it wonderful? The players are now wearing the club suits, they're stopping and signing autographs, but results cloud everything. They really do. You can... Jesse Lingard would have been able to get away prancing around in a hotel room shouting beans, beans, beans if United were league champions. But if they're not and they finish the season terribly, it just puts a completely different lens over it. So he looks like a fool. It looks like, why on earth are you doing that and publicising it to millions of people? And just on the midfield, there's another factor, Pogba. There's a big fear that Pogba was going to go in the summer. He stayed. He's a midfielder. Inferior, world-class midfielder. So... They did have Paul Pogba as well, and a lot of people thought he was going to go. In terms of the identity, you're right. Um, Oli Gunnar and his coaches, they want players to be Manchester United players. They don't want negative influences in, in the dressing room. That's why some of the players who were allowed to leave did go. Alexis Sanchez was not a popular player uh, within the dressing room. It doesn't help if you've got people like that in the dressing room. 
But being popular or, or, or positive, that can also change by the month according to whether you're playing, whether the team's winning, whether the team's playing well. These, these, these emotions are not fixed. And I totally think that um, Oli Gunn is, is, has got the right intentions. But if the team aren't winning, you can intend to do whatever you want. The team has got to be winning football matches. This is, this is Manchester United. Players can be wearing the club suits. They can be signing autographs. But if they're losing 1-0 at Newcastle and struggling to overcome Rochdale, the criticisms, quite rightly, will be very harsh um, on the manager and on everyone associated with the club. In the main, I get what he's trying to do. Strengthen the youth setup. The club have spent a lot more on the youth setup in the last four years. Why did they neglect it in the first place? That should never have been allowed to happen. And you had a culture where Fergie had a lot of time, but Lou Van Haar came in with a record for promoting young players. But his priority from day one was getting results for the first team. So he didn't really care about the youth setup because it wasn't his priority. And when you're constantly changing managers, the priority of the new incoming manager is results for the first team from day one. And the youth setup was allowed to be neglected. And I wrote a very critical article in 2015 about what was going on. And not every United fan liked to hear that, but it was the truth. My sources were brilliant. And I went on the pre-season tour a few weeks later and I expected to be cold shoulders. But what actually happened was key people at the club were coming up to me, making sure no one was looking, people you and I would know, and saying, spot on for writing that. It needed saying. And I wrote it because I'm a United fan as well as a journalist and I want United to do well. I want them to improve. I didn't want the youth system to be neglected. It is much brighter now. There's not great youth teams yet, but some very, very good players. But clearly, buying 16-year-old Hannibal for £9 million, 16-year-old is not going to go into the first team, however exciting he is. Mm. So I do think there needs to be patience, um, but they're also on the, on the part of the fans, but they're also on the part of the club. There needs to be more signings, the manager needs support, and there needs to be evidence of a brighter future. The football's got to be better than it is. Because otherwise, it's just the same as in the end days of Jose Mourinho, the end days of Louis van Gaal. Football is an escape. You want to be entertained. Manchester United should be about attacking exciting football. You're not going to get it every week. I get that. There were plenty of dull games uh, under Sir Alex in the run-up to Christmas most years and the grinding out those wins. But if you're not going to get wins, the football has got to be good. There's got to be enough signs to make it worthwhile for people to go to the match. So something that I've seen under Solskjaer that I didn't see as much under Mourinho and Van Gaal and Moyes is there's a lot more scorn towards Ed Woodward and the Glazers. It seems like there's a lot more focus in United's off-the-pitch problems, which are now coming more towards the surface than just the manager. And in this weekend's United We Stand, you've got an exclusive interview with Ed Woodward, a man who, for a lot of United fans, is a major, major part of the problem. Uh, what, what does... What, what can United fans expect to hear from Woodward in terms of the director of football that still hasn't come in, the poor recruitment that he's been largely in charge of with Matt Judge for the last few years? You know, what can United fans expect to see in this interview? Well, him answering questions, which I think he's got the right, he, he, he should do. He should be answerable to the people who pay his wages. And I put tough questions to him on those subjects. Director of football, poor recruitment, the state of Old Trafford, the future of the club, his role, his pay rise. He was reportedly saw his wages doubled in the summer. He disputes that. He explains why. He's got his point of view on certain things. We didn't agree on other parts. We didn't need to agree. I'm a United fan. I wanted to find out what on earth's going on at the club I support. And I asked him to do the interview. And I felt that I should put questions to him, tough questions to him. And I think... He wouldn't have had it any other way. Manchester United shouldn't be 12th in the league. And I want to know why. Why is the club failing? And he's got to be part of those failings because he's the top man. He's got to take it, that criticism. The Glazers have never been popular. They'll never be popular. Previous owners weren't popular either. Previous chairmen, previous chief executives. Martin Edwards wasn't popular. David Gill wasn't popular. The Glazer takeover should never have been allowed to happen in 2005. Those highly leveraged takeovers where... 
they basically bought a house and Manchester United fans have paid off the mortgage on it. Uh, but I think they've escaped a lot of criticism in recent years because they have been spending or providing managers with a lot of money to spend. The problem is that money's been squandered. Huge amounts have been wasted. And the first thing I said to Ed Woodward, why are Manchester United, with the highest wage bill in, Premier League, in the Premier League, so far behind Manchester City, so far behind Liverpool, what on earth's going on? And I think, you know, this isn't a puff piece. This is a, an interview where I sat with him for 90 minutes and I said, what's, what's going on with a director of football? I'm sick of reading it. I'm sick of writing it. Are you not appointing one because you're frightened of giving up power yourself? And he came back with his answers. And I'm entitled to ask the questions and he's entitled to, to answer them. We agree on some stuff. We disagree on others. Um, I, I put the case forward in other areas and said, look, look, you know, Old Trafford, for example, it's fallen behind. It needs more investment. I've written this more than any other journalist. It, ten years ago, it was the best stadium in the country. Now there's, there's paint peeling on some of the girders. Clearly, uh, elements of the club have been not received the, the right levels of investment. And, and I'm worried. I'm worried as a Manchester United fan. So I asked him for an interview. I kept asking him for an interview. Um, I think the communication from the club's been pretty poor as well. And I gave examples. Liverpool have got it much better in terms of the communication and the way that they do things. So I think in my position as a United fan, someone who's edited United We Stand for a long time, who's got a lot of sources at the club, who knows what's going on there, I think it's right for me to put the questions to him. A member of staff can't come out and say that because they'll lose the job. But I can as a journalist. And I think United We Stand has always interviewed key people. We did Martin Edwards the week after the Sky takeover deal was put forward. Um, we did Peter Kenyon. We did Sir Alex Ferguson. We did Jose Mourinho when he hadn't really done anything. And... Our readers are loyal. They've been buying the mag for a long time. Most of them go to all of the matches. And I think they deserve answers. And I'm, I'm pleased to say that he met me and he sat down with me. Um, don't think people will agree with everything he says. They don't need to. My job as a journalist is to put tough questions to him, and I did that. The change is what's needed at United. Everyone's aware of that behind the scenes and aware that Ed Woodward has been a part of the problem. He's not the whole problem. But this summer we saw some differences in the recruitment. It seemed smarter. It didn't seem as much of a scattergun approach. It didn't seem like Ed Woodward was leading with his marquee signings. It seemed like players were signed for the right reasons. So maybe the change is heading in the right direction. And these three signings are an example of that. But what do you think will change going forward for United? Do you ex does the club expect to spend in January? Or is it going to be a case of January is a difficult window to sign the, the players that we want to sign. Where do you think United will be by the end of this season? I think you're right, first of all, in the recruitment and what you said about what happened in, in the summer. Um, you might get to January and it might be a case of needs must. If United are still 12th in January and there's still seven players injured, that's a pretty desperate club. And they've got to act up on that. And that goes against the grain of what they've been trying to do, which was targeting players for a long time, rather than reacting, as you say, and signing players where they've not properly done due diligence. I mean, Bastian Feinsteiger, would they have signed him now? I don't think they would have done. And yet when he signed, I and many other United fans were thinking, oh, this is great. Pretty much when every player's been signed, they've been welcomed and I've become more circumspect about that. So, so when Fred signed, I spoke to people who played with him and they would say to me, off the record, on the record, it's a great, it's a great move for him. I hope he does well. Off the record, we don't, I don't think he's good enough to play for Manchester United. So what on earth's going on that leads to signing? The problem you get in football is you get two versions of the truth. And... You get people saying, well, Jose wanted Fred. He really pushed for Fred. And, other, and Jose then pushing back in very clever ways saying, no, I didn't want Fred. I don't know who has overseen the signing of Fred. I can't get to the bottom of that. And I'd like to get to the bottom of it. More than that, 
I'd like Fred to become a successful United player because he's actually a really nice fella. But just being a really nice fella doesn't mean that you're fit to play central midfield for Manchester United. So come to January, it's not ideal to get players. The top clubs don't want to sell their best players in January. Players playing in the Champions League do not want to leave and join a team in the Europa League, if United are still in the Europa League, in January. The money's there. But what has happened in the past doesn't fill me with confidence. I was delighted with Alexis Sanchez came. I think all United fans were. And Juan Mattery came in January. Uh, Vidic and Evra were two successful signings, although not initially. They came in January. Uh, I, I don't think the club are going to continue to be signing the three or four players. But I, they will be aiming for the summer and not in January. But if some of the players they've identified for the summer, they feel that they could get them in January, they would definitely move and go for them in January. And needs must, I keep saying it. If the team are failing, if they're not scoring goals, they might just have to go out and get a striker. Just like they did when they signed a lad from um, Leeds called Cantona. It was because they weren't scoring, they weren't winning goals. But they weren't the transfer window then, like, like we've got now, sadly. If, if you were to finish this interview on this last question here, what shape do you expect United to be in when the season finishes in May? What shape do you expect Solskjaer to be in as United's manager come May? Do you think that we're going to be between now and, I mean, surely we've got to be finishing way, way better than 12th. That's, yeah. That is a sackable offence for any United manager to finish 12th in the Premier League. But it's clear this squad isn't good enough. Injuries have definitely made it harder for Solskjaer, but he, you're right, he's got a responsibility as a manager to take some responsibility for what is going on. I think tactically he seems a bit more pragmatic this season in comparison to what was a more free-flowing style of football last year and the injuries haven't helped. But what can Solskjaer change as a manager between now and May to get us back towards that top four, which is our target for this season and we're so far off it? Yeah, I think one thing that does help him is other supposed rivals, they're, they're almost as bad as Manchester United. Uh, I think his best case scenario, he gets his players back, the team start playing well, like they did when he arrived. It's not massively different. Uh, the young players come on. Uh, Axel, for example, establishes himself in, in the first team. Uh, they get runs together. They need runs because even when Van Gaal and Moyes started really badly, Around this time of year, they had some really good runs. United aren't even getting them at the moment. That's why the 12th and the, and the not 7th. Uh, a good cup run will help lift the mood. Decent football will help lift the mood. More goals. The things that we're not getting at the moment will all help encourage United fans. Um, and, and 12th is not good enough. Fergie finished 13th, mine. But times, times have changed, I think, uh, since then. I do think fans are... I think they've got to be patient, including myself. Uh, got to be patient with this. Isn't something that's going to change within in the next month. But I think fans also need to see signs that things are changing, uh, because what we've seen so far this season has been nowhere near good enough, and a continuation of that for the rest of the season will be nowhere near good enough. And pressure, quite rightly will increase on people like Ed Woodward and even on, on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But a lot of these problems are not his making. And I think he's got to be supported. I think the players have got to be supported as well. Even players like Fred, he's a confidence player. He needs confidence. He wants to do well. He wants to shine for Manchester United. So I'm sort of torn between being critical because he doesn't look good enough and thinking we've got to support him. I think at matches, there's still a lot of support for Ole Gunnar. I think the... Even to a fault, um, but United fans are quite patient, and but clearly it's got to change. What we're seeing now has got to change. It's not good enough. Um, so the best case is the players are coming back from injury, uh, the results start to pick up, and the next time I speak to you, Manchester United are not 12, scoring one goal every month. I fear it can get worse than this, but I hope it doesn't. And it, you're right. It, it's amazing what. One, two, three wins will do, but for United fans who just want to chase one away win, that's been a long time coming since March. But I'm in your camp. I, I want patience with Solskjaer because I know deep down 
that sacking Solskjaer, bringing in somebody else, will start this rebuild cycle all over again. And it's just not something that United can afford to do after the mistakes that we've made. I'd rather go through a season of pain and still stay in a position where we're actually going down one path than sack a manager again halfway through a season, do another U-turn and head in the wrong direction. Because it's that sort of misguided lack of vision strategy which has, I think, contributed to the position we're in now. Well, you know, you mentioned the point about away games. Paris was absolutely brilliant, but he's seven months ago now. <laughs> this isn't acceptable for Manchester United. Got to be winning away games. The away support is brilliant. You know, even um, in Europe, it's brilliant. We're selling out games. There's no, there's no problems with the support that the team are getting from the fans. Can't be going seven months without winning an away match. Taking the piss. United clearly are a work in progress, and that's me being polite. But things have to change. We'll see what happens between now and the end of the season, and maybe a result against Liverpool can be the start of it. But I'm going into this game not expecting much and hoping for no humiliation, if I'm being perfectly honest. That's just the feeling I've got going into it. But thank you very much for your time today, Andy. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you get in the comments as well. Make sure you check out... Andy's interview with Ed Woodward in United We Stand and also make sure you check out The Athletic where Andy is a writer. As I said, follow the link in the description. You get 50% off an annual sub and a 30-day free trial with United People's TV. So get involved there. But let's hope things can turn around for Solskjaer, Andy. I think they will, but I think there will be more pain along the way. But fingers crossed we can start getting those wins and the football that Manchester United need. Yeah, I'd agree with all that. Thanks for having me. And let's hope we beat Liverpool 5-0. Couldn't dream, eh? <laughs> Cheers, Andy.